I am honored and humbled to have the opportunity to speak to you all today. This is the second most important thing I've ever written. You see, exactly 10 years ago, I wrote a poem called Firefly. Don't worry, I won't read it today. <laughs> it relied far too heavily on melodrama and cliche metaphors to deserve your attention. It's objectively a bad poem. <laughs> but the jumbled words captured a personal rawness and vulnerability worth reflection, an actual portal to my former self. And 10 years ago, through that very poem, hands trembling, voice shaking, I came out as gay to my deeply Catholic family. I mean, if your angsty teenage son walks into your room and crying tells you he has a poem to read, <laughs> get ready. <laughs> But it was a moment so raw and pure, I hope to never forget it. At that time, I, I was scared. Scared of my queerness, that thing that made me strange and different. Scared it would mean I wouldn't be like everyone else. For the longest time, I hated being queer. But as time passed, I began to see my queerness as a gift. In college, it informed my perspective on social justice. And in 2012, on a drizzly day in Sao Paulo, my queerness introduced me to the love of my life. And all along the way, it helped me build empathy. I feel deeply inadequate giving advice to my Wharton peers, who are so much more accomplished than myself in so many ways but I'm on this stage, so I have two pieces of advice. <laughs> the first is to not be afraid to be queer. Queer, a word reclaimed from the bullies in high school. And I don't mean everyone should be queer in like a gay agenda type of way, <laughs> like join the club. <laughs> but rather, love the things that make you different, odd, unique, cherish the things that make you queer in a space. In an age of automation, our queerness is what separates us from the machines, what makes us beautiful, what makes us human. And in the age of the Me Too movement, we have learned that sometimes we are not queer in our experience, but in our ability to say something. To quote the late activist Maggie Kuhn, speak your mind, even if your voice shakes. But perhaps your voice won't shake, because that, as well as the weird thing you were doing with your hands, was corrected in communications class. <laughs> so then my second piece of advice is this. If someone, hands trembling, voice shaking, has something to say to us about the world we are creating, we better listen. We are no longer the nervous teenager. Whatever community with which we identify, we are now queer in our Wharton privilege. That teenage version of myself was scared I wouldn't be like everyone else. Well, I'm not, and neither are you. And not that we are necessarily more deserving or smarter than others, but we have the immense privilege to sit in the boardrooms that will shape the society of tomorrow to have gone to Wharton. And so I leave you with this. As we set out into the world with our shiny new degrees in hand, let us embrace our queerness, however you defined it. Let us speak our minds, even if our voice shakes. And as we move into positions of power, let us remember that the most important thing of all will be to listen. Thank you.